Hello everyone! Welcome back to my studio. I'm pretending that we're family now and you're coming into my studio and you're going to ignore all the mess that is behind me and we're just going to pretend like it's tidy when, when you all come over, okay? Yeah. So this is day 24 in my quarantine distraction videos that I've been doing um, as a distraction uh, from the pandemic that we have going on. So hopefully my students at school are thinking a little bit more about clay and maybe a little less worried about things that are going on. And hopefully for all of you, this is a little distraction from uh, some things and it gets you thinking creatively about clay again. So shout out to DB's Artworks who asked in a comment if I could do a video on spoon rests. So DB, this is for you today and everyone else who wants to know a little bit about making spoon rests. I have three different type of wheel thrown spoon rests and I'm sorry if these are a little bit bright here. Let's see if I can get it to monitor a little bit better. Oh. It's a little bit better. So I have three different spoon rests. One is notched. So all of, all three were thrown practically the same. This one is bent down like a spout. So this one is bent down like a pitcher spout. And then this one is folded back up. And they, so they all have a channel for the handle to, um, to uh, kind of stick out and stick through. So hopefully you find this enjoyable. Please subscribe if you uh, want to see some more videos on working with clay. And... Um, Shoot me any comments below and uh, let me know what you're working on or things that you would like for uh, me to do. I'm trying to keep a running list of some ideas. So enjoy and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. For throwing these today, I'm going to be throwing them on the wooden bat system with the square inserts that I uh, got from Batman in Canada. I'll link that information in the video description. Um, I know that I have a couple other videos, um, one where I unbox it. You could check that out if you want to learn more about the system. I am using three quarters of a pound of clay for each of these today. And I'm just going to center this up real quickly. Now, when I'm going to make something like a plate, I center it, but then I drop it down so it's more of a wide disc. So this is probably half an inch, three eighths of an inch to half an inch in thickness. I am not going to be trimming a foot on this. I'm going to leave it a flat bottom. So it's probably closer to three eighths of an inch. Now, if you are making consistent spoon rests, like you're going to make multiples of these, I would definitely measure them and be consistent with your width on, on that. So the way that I make the edge of the spoon rest is I'm going to take my dominant hand thumb, okay, so in this case it's my right thumb, and I kind of brace my other hand holding it, and I push in. This is a way that I show my students how to make a plate rim by lifting the edge of the plate. And then I can thin and compress. There we go. Now that's a totally smooth one. Um, I Since I have three different ones, one I'm gonna notch, one I'm going to bend down, and one I'm gonna bend up. So I'll leave this one to be the one that I'm going to notch. I'm going to trim away, do a little undercut underneath the edge of the wall. And then even though I have been told that you don't have to cut, um, I am going to just trim the very bottom of that against the wood. But I've, told, I've been told that if you just leave it on there, it'll be fine, that you can lift it up. I do like to wet down that bat just a little bit. I don't know that it's absolutely necessary. I just kind of like it to have just a little bit of moisture to help get the piece of clay to stick well. And I'll go ahead and center this up. So again, once I have it in the hockey puck, 
I'm just going to drop it down because I'm making a more of a plate form. And I'm just speeding through the same centering and flattening process that I did in the other ones. Now, if at this point, if you have dropped this and you know it's it's even all the way across but if your edge is not even mine is even but uh, I just want to show you a trick if your edge is not even at this point but for sure your your top is and let's say maybe one of the things you could do with your top to make sure it's even is you could actually take something flat to make sure it looks even okay but the way to even up your edge if you want to, let me just add a little moisture. Once you know it's totally flat, if you're not even, you can take a wooden knife and notice I'm holding two hands and I very securely hold it and I trim off the edge. That's a little trick that I show my students for plate making. It makes it a lot easier. Once again, my dominant thumb, I push down against the bat. I'm gonna thin the wall out and then I'm gonna just kind of compress the rim. Make sure that rim is not too thin because if, if this is on your kitchen counter or your stove and you're using it a lot, you don't wanna have a tendency to chip a really thin edge. So I usually give it some nice compression there. There we go. I'm going to do one more thing on this one that I didn't do before, and that is I'm going to add a little spiral. I squeezed a little bit of water there with my sponge. I'm just putting a decorative spiral. Okay. I'll give it a slight undercut, which it didn't really need that. And then I'm going to take, like I'm making a pitcher spout basically, I'm holding two edges like this and I'm pushing it down. So that gives me the place where the spoon handle can come out. This is probably, this would be my preferred method of making a spoon rest out of the three that I'm showing you. But I wanted to show you three options because there's not one right way, just preferences that people have. And I'm just really speeding through the centering process of this last one, just to get it down again, about half an inch, three eighths of an inch thick. The only thing that I did differently on this one is I made the bottom, uh, perhaps a little bit more narrow and I had the wall scooping out a little bit earlier. So this is the third method and to give it a place where the handle is going to sit, I'm going to bend this inward like this so the handle then will lay across like that. And we'll trim that one off too. And We'll come back to this in a few hours when all of these are leather hard and I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so all three of my little spoon rests have been uh, sitting out for several hours, probably four or five hours, and they're now leather hard, and I am ready to finish them. Alrighty, so this was the first one that I threw and you'll remember that I did cut it off the bat. It is just at that leather hard state now. I'm going to put this on a piece of foam rubber so I can put it upside down. And quite simply, I just wanna tidy up this bottom edge by ribbing off any uh, excess and putting a slight bevel on, on that corner. When I uh, go to glaze it, I like to have a slight bevel on uh, the bottom corner of something if it doesn't have a foot. It gives me a really logical place to stop glazing or to put the wax. So 
that's good for trimming the bottom on that one. Now to finish this one off to make it look like a spoon rest, I'm going to just draw uh, a, what is going to be a notch that would be big enough for a spoon handle to go through. So if I draw it on there, you can see I just have it kind of arched. Now I could cut this with a knife, knife with an exacto. I could cut it with a fettling knife. I could cut it with a wire. I see my wire is actually, it needs to be tightened. So it looks like I can't use the, that after all. I will just cut it with an exacto. I'm gonna rotate it this way a little bit. And I just wanna make sure that I'm trying to go all the way through the wall. So now I have that notch and I can use a little bit of moisture on my sponge. If this clay had any grog in it, I would not be using a sponge. This is my grogless bee mix that I'm using. If I were using grogged clay or grogged bee mix, I would probably just use a wet paintbrush to clean that up. So there we go. That is spoon rest number one. Easy peasy. Spoon us number two is complete after I do the bottom. There is a slight texture from my finger. I just want to get rid of that. There we go. That looks better. This one is a little less common of a way, but I think it's kind of cute, kind of fun, a little different to have it kind of fold up like this. And right in here, I might take a sponge or a paintbrush and just kind of clean that up to make sure that the fold over looks really nice. I stamped and signed. And I'm just finishing the other two by stamping and signing them. I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, video on making three different spoon rests. Please subscribe. Thanks.